This is the Crypto Mile, a square mile in the financial heart of the city. On this week's show, we'll explore the future of filmmaking and Web3. We'll be chatting with Matt Hookings and James Mackey, who came together to secure funding for Prizefighter, The Life of Jen Belcher, a new Amazon Prime drama starring Russell Crowe and Ray Winston. Then we'll check in with director Joe Hunting, who filmed his award-winning documentary, We Met in Virtual Reality, Inside the Metaverse. Welcome to the Crypto Mile. As we move closer towards Web3, the film and TV industries are undergoing their own revolution, as creatives are recognizing and utilizing new ways to create and fund their work. The first hurdle every filmmaker has to cross is how to obtain funding for their ideas. Crypto startups and film industry professionals have ambitions to disrupt the film industry and the traditional funding routes by offering the chance for anyone to invest in film production. This is via pre-sale NFTs and taking a share of those profits via the blockchain. This is in response to the concentration of film industry power and finance into fewer and fewer hands. These new technologies are also providing groundbreaking and never seen before options for filmmakers to create visual content. The metaverse, for example, has inspired a subsection of filmmakers and we are now seeing for the first time ever long form narrative video content being shot entirely within these virtual worlds. These digital platforms are also now being considered as a way to exhibit film content with 24 hour virtual cinemas where audiences can become fully immersed. Now, today's guests have all recently made their first forays into utilising these technologies to create and to fund their work. OK, let's head downtown to meet them. Today on The Crypto Mile, we have Matt Hookings, the writer, producer and actor of Prizefighter, The Life of Jen Belcher, and James Mackey, the team lead at MovieCoin. Welcome, James. Welcome, Matt, to The Crypto Mile. Thanks very much, Brian. Can you describe why the life of Jem Belcher? Why make, a, why make a movie about that? I was hooked to Jem's story. It was a fascinating story. The youngest ever champion at 19. He was blind by the time he was 22 and dead by the time he was 30. Ain't no place for you, boy. That's my grandpa. And he had a very Muhammad Ali-esque reminiscence about him in the way he spoke, the way he moved. He was way ahead of his time. Jack Slack's blood, eh? And he changed the sport of boxing from this into the jab and the speed and the, the scientific approach to it. And that hooked me, you know, a true story around a really textured uh, moment in history. Well, the story sounds like a journey of ups and downs, but can you describe the story of actually making it? Yeah, it's, yeah more, more ups and downs. I mean, look, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an in, I tried to make an independent film with a, with a studio level cast during COVID without, you know, support from the core institutes within the UK, Film Wales and BFI. So it was a very grabbing this bit of funding, grabbing that bit of funding, getting Russell Crowe, getting this pre-sale or selling this territory. And, you know, we got to a point in Malta where I reached out to James and, and, you know, said, is there anything we can do to help bring MovieCoin in and the NFT side to, to raise some more funding? Because Russell Crowe's got to come to Malta certain costs have gone up. He was flying on a plane, which had to stop in the UK. So it was all these different things. And, um, you know, very, very last minute managed to managed to pull in the funding with, with James's help through MovieCoin and NFTs in that sense. But it was, a, you know, it was just, it was just bonkers. He was on, it, Russell Crowe was on the way to the airport. And he was going to go the other way. So <laughs> it's very, very last minute, you know, through, through James's help. Well, James, actually, how was Prizefighter Park financed using NFTs? The whole idea of moviecoin.com is to fund movies using crypto or NFTs. So sometimes it needs to be like a creative process because you've got to exactly understand, OK, how do we raise the money through NFTs or through crypto? So we actually decided to take some of the props from the film. So, for example, boxing gloves that Russell Crowe was wearing or, or that Matt was wearing, uh, one of the actors in, in the film. And we actually made the props in, into NFTs mm. and then we sold those NFTs. Now, 
unbelievably, when we put them up um, on an NFT marketplace, on the first day, one of them sold for $5,000. So we were able to you know, convert that money at the time from Ethereum into a fiat currency uh, and then give that to, to Matt to help fund the movie. And if you look at all the movie makers around the world now that are using NFTs, they're using really creative ways to, to, uh, to fund the film. Like somebody just raised a million dollars for their film by actually making NFTs of the audition tapes of all the actors. What's in it for investors if they want to purchase a movie called NFT? Is there a profit share? There is, yeah. So we do the math behind, uh, you know, what's the overall budget? How much are we going to raise for the film? At the moment, it's small amounts. We're raising very tiny percentages of, of the whole budget of the film, right? And we calculate a profit share to distribute back to the NFT holders. So, you know, it could be 0.01% per NFT, 0.4% is the highest that we're giving for some, uh, some NFTs. On average, it's about 0.01% of the whole film. So we want to be really realistic um, and we allow the crowd to select the films that they want to have financed on our platform on moviecoin.com. Um, once they pick the films, it's down to them. And then it's down to creatives like Matt who make the films where hopefully some profit's made and we'll return a share of that profit back to the NFT holders. Okay, so this is lowering the barrier to become an investor in a movie. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, at the moment, the lowest is $100 you can buy an NFT for. So, that, so the minimum entry to a film, as you said, is now $100 to own a share of the profits in that movie. Uh, right. Now, if I'm an investor, a retail investor, and I want to invest uh, in a movie coin NFT, and say so it's a minimum of, say, $100, did yeah. you say, or $10? $100 or $100 oh, but around $100. Yeah. Would I not then have to pay maybe $500 in gas fees on the Ethereum blockchain? Yeah, we actually migrated across to the Polygon network mm. because we had exactly that complaint. Everybody was saying that, that you know, we're buying a $100 NFT and we've got to pay 50 bucks in gas or 200 bucks in, in gas. So we migrated across to the Polygon network. So you know, you're, at the moment, you're, well, nearly all the time, your transaction is going to be lower than one cent, your gas fee. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of been taken out now. Matt Hookings, thank you very much for being on the Crypto Mile. And thanks very much, James Mackey from MovieCoin. Thanks very much, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Cheers. Next up on today's show is Joe Hunting, who will run us through his experience filming inside the metaverse. Today we speak to Joe Hunting, the director of We Met in Virtual Reality. Joe, welcome to the Crypto Mile. Hey, thank you so much for having me. So, Joe, there were always three or two major film forms, live action and animation. Do you think metaverse movies is a film form all to itself that is developing? Oh, I think that's a great question to be asking at the moment. Um, I will say yes, uh, in my humble opinion. I think animation and live action certainly have a place in metaverse. I don't think we'll encroach on that, but I think it is a separate um, cinematic language that I've come to, to work in and a few other filmmakers I know are also starting to work in in creating films and media entirely inside of social VR universes where everything happens in real time. I think that is a separate space. One could say it's very similar to animation and can be used for animation, but filming in real time for a documentary and fiction I think is very unique. What are the benefits of actually making a film within the metaverse? There are so many unique benefits to filming in VR and in, in a metaverse context. I think one is locations. I have so many stunning worlds to explore and use in, in my work um, that are made by incredible, talented world creators, which is an amazing thing to have at my disposal. I don't have to travel to go and interview and work with actors or subjects. I just drop a portal or teleport straight to them from the UK and they're in California or Canada. That's another great benefit. It, uh, we Met in Virtual Reality is also a film that I made 90% of it in my pajamas. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's also still as, it's just as physically exhausting as well as, as, as many other workflows. You're still up on your feet. Uh, a long, you know, long times and working with a camera. Myself, I, I shoot with a, a camera in VR and it's really important to me to have a presence of camera, so I'm on my feet a lot. So, you know, I could go into the disadvantages too, but there's so many unique benefits to filming inside a, a VR world. We chatted about the process of creating the movie, but what about exhibition? Is it going to be exhibited in virtual reality? And what's your view on VR cinemas? The documentary will have 
a limited uh, few VR screenings that I will be hosted in VR chat um, for those who supported the film on our crowdfunding campaign and to celebrate the film with the communities that came and, and were associated with the film. Uh, which we're really looking forward to and we'll certainly share pictures of, of those events and that's really important to me that the film is seen in the space that it was created in. In terms of speaking more widely about exhibition and how films can be played in VR, I think we've already seen you know some of that with big screen and people hosting screenings in VR chat as well. I think it's so exciting to be pushing that space, especially for filmmakers like myself who are making work in the metaverse and in VR. Um, I think that has a very strong future and I myself am, am certainly one to help push that and give indie filmmakers a space to show their works um, you know, in, in worlds that are suitable for them. Thank you very much for coming on the Crypto Mile. It has been a pleasure to speak to you. Mm, thank you so much. The disruptive potential of blockchain technology has now reached the movie business. The new NFT funding and distribution alternatives that are open to filmmakers and the more immersive experience offered by the metaverse has caught the eye of independent producers and the major studios. But can the major studios adapt to a technological innovation that by its very essence is based upon decentralization? Or could the golden age when studio executives dictated what audiences watched and when they watched it truly become once upon a time in Hollywood? Thanks for joining us this week on the Crypto Mile. We'll see you again next week.